All right, I think we might get started, everyone. And I'm thrilled to discover the microphone works. I decided I would find that out just by talking loudly and seeing if I got your attention. My name is Michael Williams, and I'm the director of the Wheeler Centre here in Melbourne. And I'm thrilled uh, to be moderating proceedings for tonight's first in Environment Victoria's series of state election environment forums. Uh, there are two of them currently planned, one tonight and one next Tuesday night. Uh, the government have been asked whether they wish to participate in one such event. Uh, they have chosen at this point not to do so, but the invitation remains open. So after the uh, enthusiastic response that um, the people who have participated get, I'm sure they'll come knocking down our doors to be here uh, after that. Um, I should acknowledge we're on uh, the traditional land of the Kulin Nations and pay my respects to their elders past and present and the elders of any other communities who may be with us tonight. For me, this acknowledgement is in part an acknowledgement that the legal and moral implications of invasion remain unresolved to this day. Um, the reason I said yes when Mark Wakem so charmingly and winningly asked me to moderate tonight's proceedings is the Wheeler Centre is devoted to public conversation. Uh, we believe that it's not crash hot, frankly, and that we could be better at talking about the ideas that matter to us and the ways in which we could be a better society and a better community. Uh, and obviously, coming into a state election, uh, the quality of debate's only going to get better from here. I mean, it's really going to be pretty fantastic between now and the end of the year. Um, obviously, what happens is we get told very quickly by our media masters which issues matter and which ones don't, which ones that are election changes, which ones matter in the marginal seats, which ones we should care about. But those of us who are invested in an idea about community and an idea about society, know that it goes far beyond that, that there are issues that matter to us that we want on the agenda, that we want talked about going into the election. And uh, obviously for all of us here tonight, the environment is one such issue. Uh, proceedings tonight will take a fairly straightforward form. Uh, there'll be a couple of introductory remarks and then our two speakers tonight who join us from the ALP, uh, Lily D'Ambrosio, who's Shadow Minister for Energy and Resources, and Lisa Neville, who's Shadow Minister for the Environment and Climate Change, will each give a short presentation talking about what they're taking to the election. Now, uh, we hugely appreciate them being here tonight and we anticipate they will not be able to answer all of your questions. They may choose not to reveal policy, although secretly they, we're wishing that they will. Um, I ask you to be respectful in the way that you talk to them and the way you pose your questions, because the bulk of the evening will be your chance to talk to them. This is your opportunity to talk to people who are making a case for why they should be allowed to be part of your government. So um, I think we have a, a fun evening ahead. Uh, I'll remind you all to keep yourselves nice. And before we kick off, uh, the epitome of nice is Environment Victoria CEO Mark Wakem. Uh, before Mark, though, having done that introduction so elegantly, he did a little point which reminded me that before that we're very lucky to be using uh, this magnificent RMIT resource and I would ask uh, for a brief remarks from RMIT to welcome you all here tonight. Thank you. Uh, from uh, Associate Professor Martin Mulligan. And on behalf of the Sustainability and Urban Planning section of the School of Global Urban and Social Studies, I'd like to welcome you to RMIT and to this relatively new uh, space that we're in. I'm glad you can navigate the various uh, elevators to find your way here, but I think you'll agree that it's a rather nice space when you make it here. And we're delighted to provide a forum for an event like this. As an education provider, I'll be very brief, uh, facing an uncertain future, in terms of funding cuts and deregulation, we very much value our relationships with organisations like Environment Victoria, all of the organisations listed here. Um, we very much admire the way in which Environment Victoria um, has remade itself after the funding cuts for the last election cycle um, and uh, managed to survive and refresh itself. Um, and we are in a process of trying to make sure that the only social science environment program, degree program in Australia, uh, survives and thrives. And so we've reviewed it and revised it and I'm refreshing it and promoting it and I'm going to take the chance to pass around these cards in case anybody here knows somebody who might be interested in university education on the social science environment. With having said that, I'm glad to be able to provide the space, I think it's a, a nice space and I'm looking forward to the forum, thank you.
Thank you so much. And just a tip, if you are interested in tertiary education, get onto it fast. Um, it may not be around in a couple of years' time, so just, you know, Christopher Pine's only getting going, so you might want to might want to move in. Without further ado, I'm going to throw to the CEO of Environment, Victoria, Mark Wakem, to talk a little bit about this series. Thanks, Mark. Thanks very much, Michael, and thank you all very much for coming. Thank you very much to RMIT for hosting uh, the events. Um, and I'd also like to recognise the traditional owners of this land uh, that we're meeting on, the Wurundjeri people from the Kulin Nation, and really pay my respects to the way that they managed to look after this country so much better than we have for so long. It's 67 days till the state election, and Victorians will then decide who will leave the state from 2014 to 2018. We have long terms of government in Victoria, as we discovered in 2010. Four years is a long time in which much can be achieved or destroyed. We need our next state government to face up to the crises that we face as a planet and as a state. If we look at the global indicators on uh, greenhouse gas emissions, on the state of our freshwater environments, on consumption, uh, the trends are all alarming. And if we look closer to home, at the Victorian State of Environment and, and the research that was done by the Commissioner and released late, late last year, all the indicators in Victoria are also all alarming, whether it's the condition of land and water, um, our greenhouse emissions, our generation of waste, our protection of threatened species, we're going backwards. And to make matters worse, for the last four years we've had um, a coalition government elected without an environment policy, who then proceeded to systematic, systematically dismantle climate change programs and uh, legislation and launch new attacks on our environment, natural environment. So state elections really matter. Uh, and we need to find out in the next two months whether the next state government will do the things that need to be done. We need to find out whether the next state government will clean up our energy supply embrace renewable energy, plan for the closure of our dirtiest power stations? Will the next state government abandon plans for new coal mines or other new fossil fuel projects? Will the next state government get serious about making our homes and our communities efficient and affordable and sustainable? There's been a lot of talk about infrastructure so far in the election campaign, uh, but very little talk about the infrastructure which is closest to home, which is the homes that we live in and um, around 1.9 million Victorian homes are of a standard of around two stars. So the, those homes built before 2005 are a standard of around two stars. They're not good for the environment, they're not good to live in, uh, they're expensive to live in, and they're also dangerous to live in in heatwaves. Will the next state government get serious about restoring nature? Will they protect our rivers from over-extraction and from stock damage? Will they protect our forests from uneconomic and damaging logging and save species like the Leadbeater's possum? And will they protect our national parks from developers and graziers? We've seen where the coalition's at on these issues, and as Michael said, we, we put the invitation out there um, for them to participate, and so far um, they haven't accepted that invitation. The coalition knows that they have a problem on the environment, and the way that they're choosing to deal with that problem is to not talk about it. We know that their internal polling in the eastern suburbs is showing that they've got a real problem on the environment. This has led in some circles to a suggestion that the environment is not high on the agenda in the state election. And of course it's a vicious cycle. If the government stops talking about the environment and climate change, so the media stops reporting it on it, and commentators decide that the election will be determined upon other issues. But amongst the Victorian public, there's very clear appetite and votes to be gained from a plan to restore our environment. We know that four out of five Victorians support investment in renewable energy. We know that the most popular environment policy action a state government could take is to introduce energy efficiency programs. We know the vast majority of Victorians know that you can't have a healthy, a healthy economy without a healthy environment. And we saw in the Crosby Texter poll that was done last week, really rapidly growing 
concern about the environment, state of the environment nationally, which reflected, again, which repeated the findings of the Lowy poll earlier this year. On Sunday, 30,000 people hit the streets in Melbourne seeking leadership on climate change action. I think there was 1,000 people in Geelong and hundreds in Kyneton as well, which must be one of Kyneton's with the largest ever rallies. And every day, dozens of undecided voters in places like Frankston, Morty Alec, Forest Hill, Macedon, Geelong, Morwell <coughs> are pledging to use their vote for the environment on November 29. So we've got community leadership. Now we need some political leadership. Today, some, many of you will have seen the announcement from the South Australian government. They announced that their uh, target to achieve a third of the, their electricity for the state from renewable energy sources by 2020, they had actually achieved it. Now, they've achieved that, 2014. And they announced that if the REC, the renewable energy target nationally, is maintained, they'll increase that target to 50% by 2025. So we can see what a state government can do. And we really welcome the fact that two out of three of the main political parties contesting the state election are participating in these forums and joining us to outline their vision for Victoria. And we really want to thank Lisa and Lily for participating tonight and representing the Australian Labor Party. Uh, as Michael said, please respect that they've been invited here and they don't have to be here, um, but they've chosen to make, make themselves available. Um, We've all got plenty of issues that we'd love to have explicit commitments on tonight, but we have to recognise that there are 67 days between now and the election, and parties will make their own decisions about when the best time to release their policy is. So, uh, enjoy tonight. Uh, listen respectfully, question inquisitively, and get involved in one of the campaigns that's really well represented here tonight. There's a bunch of campaigns that you can get involved in here tonight if, you, if you're interested. For those of you who have taken a pledge card, um, pledging to vote for our environment, please um, return it on the way out. And that's enough from me, but thanks very much for your involvement tonight, and thank you, Mark. <laughs>